Hello, my name's Peter Berry. I run Back is Six Milf My Sins, and I'd like to welcome you to my workshop. What you can see here is a selection of some of the moulds that we have that we use to make our little men. We have about 2,000 moulds stacked up in five racks, which you can't see because they're off shop, so you have to trust me on this one. Uh, and they are what all your little men come from. That's how your little lead soldiers are born. What I'm going to start with is how we got to here, mm -hmm. how Bacchus started. And this is a very, very first range of models that we produced. As you'll notice, there's no figures in there. It's purely just buildings. Um, as a little gift to you all, you'll get a free, very, very first Bacchus catalogue. And you can just see how prices have changed between <laughs> 1986 and today, and it's quite an eye-opener. As you were all aware, we had some difficulties during the COVID year, months because we couldn't get people in the workshop because it was so crowded. Now you can see why. <coughs> yep. uh, and we, we're going back and forwards. Uh, this is a typical casting area. My colleague Andrew is going to show you a bit more about that process uh, later. But what I'm going to tell you about now is how something like that appears on a tabletop. Okay? And so I'm going to take you from beginning to end. So everything in life will start with one of these. I don't know if you can get closer for a shot for that. That is a sculpt. People call it a green for obvious reasons. The next stage we've got that is we'll get that and quite a lot of other greens and models. Uh, a lot of the stuff that Andrew is doing. Andrew is, is also the guy who's behind the models for our World War II range. And they go into what we call, well, I call it a master mould. It's got different terms. And you'll learn all about moulding soon. And in all of these individual figures, you will see this little chap. And I'm going to give you both of these. You'll see that one is a copy of the other. Well, maybe these are imperceptible. These are the little lines to allow the air to come out. That's of the right. End. They're, they're vents. If you've got air trapped in a mould, uh, the air won't want to come out. So you put metal in and it will stop. So you'll get an incomplete figure or an incomplete casting. So the venting is really, really important. And you just cut those with the craft knife? Cut those with the scalpel. And again, when, when it gets really tricky, uh, Andrew sits there with the Dremel <laughs> and does unspeakable things to these moles. Full of things are screaming. Blow your devil. So now we've got this little chap. What we then do is that mould gets spun and spun and spun. So we end up with lots and lots of these sprues until we get enough decent castings, four decent castings, and they're stuck to a little strip like that. You'll see here, we now have a strip for little streltsy. Uh, yeah. yeah, right, so if you like to pass those around. That is what we call a pattern. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, if you think of it, we've got the stage of a sculpt, a master, and a pattern. We've now got a little strip of four there, and then that mould gets spun and spun and spun and eventually we end up with a little pile of streltsy strips like that. And at that stage they're then put into a production mould. And this is where we start making series numbers of them. How long does it take to make one of them? Well, I'm going to let Andrew talk you through the mould making process shortly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, very good. All right, so away we go. So here we have a mould. In this case, I think we have British Light Infantry skirmishes, Napoleonic period. Um, all running about gleefully, pointing their muskets at anybody they can find. Top goes on, into the machine, top plate, and we close the lid, put our glasses on, and press the big green button. Thank you. 
plate off. This uh, probably is a mould full of frozen solid figures, but the sprues and the feeds will still be liquid and will burn me if I try and open the mould now. So I set that aside and I'll typically run three moulds before I open this first one. So the second one goes in, same process, and top plate on, lid down, start, bit of metal, stop. Um, I don't know if you can hear me over the noise of this thing, uh, this is a very primitive machine which we think originated at Hinchliffe, possibly in the 1960s. Um, it is literally just a direct drive electric motor with an on and an off switch operating at 240 volts and about 15 amps at peak. Um, it has no electronics, no speed control, no forward, no reverse and no braking, which is why I'm able to say all that in the time it takes for the machine to stop. So, second mould out. Third mould in. Plate on. Lid down. Spun three moulds and the first one now is safe to open. Um, the figures will have frozen in the mould pretty quickly, but most of the metal is in this large feeding ring and sometimes in these um, radial feeding arms. All we have to do now is bend the rubber slightly, pop the whole thing out, sometimes it leaves a couple of figures behind or a couple of strips, take those out and these break off the sprue very easily. Much easier than an FX kit or a, a Revel kit if you're from a different part of the world. And that's how we go from a lot of production moulds on a shelf behind me um, to the product that arrives through your letterbox courtesy of Bacchus 6mm Limited. Our most popular ranges, uh, there are two of them really, is American Civil War and of course Napoleonic. Now these sell everywhere. We sell these from Australia to New Zealand to Canada to the United States to France to Germany and even to Seoul. And strangely enough, American Civil War is massively popular in Germany. And I'm sure some of your German viewers can answer the question as to why that's the case. I certainly can't. I only know we ship a lot of them there. We'll tell you, if I say that something is going to be released inside the next 12 months, I'm probably telling a great big lie. So I'm going to have a go at putting the crystal ball and telling you what's coming next. We will be expanding the World War II range. We've actually nearly completed the first phase of that, which is Northwest Europe, 1944-45. Uh, We're adding some very nice little aircraft models to that. And then we're moving on and we'll be doing North Africa. Other news, we are expanding, or continue to expand our re-sculpting of the Great North War range, and you'll very shortly see some new Polish winged Hussars making their appearance. Uh, and following that, we'll be doing Italian Wars. That's a first. Nobody's heard that apart from you. Uh, so we've got plans for Landsknecht and some gendarmes, very pretty armies. On the ancient side, we are adding some Byzantines to the range, which have been requested for an awful long time. But we've got that well in hand, and you should be seeing those before the end of the year. Now we've got other plans, but I'm not going to tell you about those yet, because they may not happen. But trust me, we've always got ideas coming through, and you'll see lots of new rangers continue to come from Bacchus in months and years to come.